Okay, welcome to another Knee Jerk Reaction video review. This is where I watch a movie and I review it right after, so I have no time to think about it. No time to prepare, no time to think. Uh, there will be spoilers in this one. I know I always warn about spoilers, so I might talk about the movie, but it's going to be really difficult to uh, to review this movie without spoilers. It's just, it's, I'm going to have to use spoilers. But anyway, uh, this movie is called, let's see, is there anything else I need to do? No, anyway, this movie is called Everything Beautiful is Far Away. It was one of those movies that kept getting recommended to me. And, you know, I've already closed the window. I can't remember if it was on Netflix or Hulu. But um, it's on one of the big streaming services. And uh, it looked kind of neat. It was a futuristic, takes place in the future. Um, I thought, oh, this might be a good movie. And, well... <laughs> I said this before, it's really easy to pan a bad movie. It's really easy just to talk about all around things with it. And it's really easy to to praise a good movie. Um, but you know, this this movie was just um it was just kind of there. And I watched it in bed, so I, it wasn't a movie I was, you know, head on while I was doing something else. I actually paid attention to this movie. And I gotta tell you, I just I didn't really think it was worth it. Um it had what I call Star Wars level of of technology. Like in Star Wars, everything is just so freaking advanced, and everyone just takes it for granted, and everyone just you know it's no big deal. Same thing in here. They it's about these two people. Well, it starts out with one guy wandering through the desert. He has the the head of a robot with him. Um, the story is narrated by the robot. Um, and just the technology is so far advanced, you know, it's like, oh, you know, he has the, his water supply, which is, you know, it was so advanced to be magic. It was, you know, there is nothing today that you can think of as, oh, that's possible. You know, there's just no way it's possible. But you think, okay, this is so far in the future, um, that's possible. They don't answer questions. And, again, I don't think that's a bad thing. But for me personally, I like to have questions answered. But sometimes a movie doesn't answer questions, and I don't think that's a bad thing. That's a decision made by the directors and, and the writers and stuff, but um, this doesn't answer the question why this guy was just wandering through the desert. Apparently, um, the closest they came to it just that he likes solitude. Um, there's these little plants that grow in the desert, and uh, apparently they're edible. He comes across this woman dying, and you can tell... This guy has like no social skills because he saves her life, and as soon as she wakes up, he's like, "You ate the bad root. This is the good root. You know, this is how you tell the difference. And you ate the bad root, so make sure you only eat the good root." And you know, she's still like waking up, going, "Huh? Why? Well, where am I?" And, you know, so you kind of get the feeling this guy's been alone for a long, long time. He doesn't know how to deal with people, and then you get the feeling that this woman is like running away from something because she's in the desert. She has no supplies. Um, she's I, she had a bedroll, I think that was her only thing. But you just get the feeling that she was um, there unprepared. Anyway, I just I got the feeling she ran away. They did mention something about cities, um, and through the whole movie, these are the only two characters, except they do meet one wandering guy um, who doesn't say much, and he's like the other guy. He just wants to be alone. He doesn't say anything. And they pass, they just continue on. But I, the movie was just so dull and predictable. I mean, as soon as, as soon as, like, these two met, you knew, well, I mean, they're the only two characters in the movie, so you knew that they were going to start walking together. And she's talking about some lake, and this lake is supposed to be, like, a mythical level lake. You know, no one believes it's there. And she asked him about it, and he's like, well,. You know, I'm not so sure it exists, but if it does, it's over this way. And she wants to wake... Oh, I think they found, like, a dead battery, but it had enough charge to wake the robot head up. And she asked the robot head if this lake was real, and the robot head said yes, and it went out again. So, you know, okay, that's going to be their thing. They're going to find this lake. And then they later on... And there's just, like, these little piles of debris all around. And you wonder, like, did planes crash here? Did They never explain it. They're just little piles of debris. And in one of these piles, he finds an actual working battery that's good for 10,000 years or whatever. And he hooks the, the head up to it. And the head, I don't know what plot device this is supposed to be, but 
apparently he had promised this robot that he would fix its body, and he had to admit, no, I, I'm not going to fix your body, but, you know, at least you're powered back up again. And so the, the lady asked him, you know, is this lake real? And the robot head says, yes, it's over this way. It's about 12 days' walk. And the guy is like, no, you can't walk that way. You're going to run out of food, and there might not be water. And just already you knew that it was going to happen. And so they walked in that direction, and they ran out of food. And they had trouble with getting water. And then they come over a hill, and there's the lake. And it wasn't so much a lake as, like, an ocean. I mean... You couldn't see the other side. It went on as far as you can see in both directions. Um, I don't know. I always pictured a freshwater lake to have stuff growing on the shore. But this, I'm thinking this was a saltwater sea because it was just where the desert met the sea. And there was nothing. Uh, just these little plants where they ate the roots. And that's where it ended. They, they were like, oh, and the robot had said, you know, this, they formed a community that eventually gathered 240 people or something like that. And they never showed any of that. They just showed the two people getting to the lake and frolicking in the water. Um, that was it. That's the whole story. I just told you the whole movie. <laughs> and, I mean, as a short story, if I was reading that as a short story that was maybe three pages long or something, or maybe a short movie or, or something, um, I don't know. But for an hour and a half or whatever it was, oh, my gosh, no, it just it did not need to stretch out that long. Um, I want to say, my mom once said something to me that really stuck to me. We were watching this movie where we were this bad guy, and we just hated this bad guy. And she, during a commercial, she made a comment like, I really hate that guy, and that just means he's a really good actor. And that always stuck with me. So these people... I want to say they're going to be good actors. I've never heard of either one of them. I, you know, this is knee-jerk reaction, so I don't even have the page up anymore. I don't know who was in this movie. Just two people I've never heard of. Really pretty girl, kind of a nerdy guy. Um, but they did make you feel like it. She felt like someone that ran away and now she's stuck in the desert. Or she intentionally came to the desert to find this lake. They never really explained, like, did civilization die? He did mention a city at one point. Um, but they never explain, you know, is this post-apocalyptic? Is this just people wandering in the desert? Uh, is the city the last city or are there other cities? They, they never explain anything. And, um, they never explain the technology he uses, you know, just the water thing works and they just, they never question it. And he had like medicine that worked and they never questioned it. Um, but... <laughs> There was just no story. I was just two people walking in the desert. And that's, that's the other thing. Like, I want to, I'm thinking of, uh, Speed Racer. Now, Speed Racer, I don't know, it had kind of a crazy story that I couldn't follow. I think I was kind of high when I was watching it, but man, it was gorgeous. I would watch it again just to see all those racetrack scenes and, you know, they made it really feel like you were watching like a living cartoon or a living video game. It was visually exciting. And this movie, it's desert, so all you see is sand and the two people. There's nothing to see. Um, this is where I got nitpicked because this is one thing that bothered me. Um, it would have been more believable, but like they're walking where no one's ever gone before, but you can see footprints in the sand in front of them. And this just told me like they did this shot before, and maybe they're doing a, a second take or a third take. But you know, wipe out the footprints, get those out of the picture, because that just bugged the hell out of me. And they were very obvious, and they're walking like, okay, you know, if we go this way, we're gonna starve. But here's like footprints going off into the sand, and those little details bugged the crap out of me. And I know this was like an indie film or whatever, so they don't have big budgets for watching out for stuff like that. But you know, if you're gonna be a filmmaker, I would be like the nitpicky guy that, you know, what do they call it? The uh, there's a name for it continuity director or whatever, you know, don't let footprints go off in the direction where no one's ever gone before. And sand, you know, and being sand, you know, the footprints are probably going to be gone the next day, but no, there's footprints going off, so someone just went there like a couple hours ago. Anyway, that bugged the crap out of me. Um, that's about the only thing that bugged the crap out of me, other than it was just boring. They get to the water, boom, that's the end of the story. They never explain what the robot was. They never explain what year it is or what happened. And like I said, that's not a bad thing. That's just something that bugs me. But it's just boring. There was no challenges. You knew as soon as he said there's no food in that direction, you knew they were going to run short on food, but then they would make it. 
And that's exactly what happened. And you knew as soon as he woke her up and he's like, well, I'll help you in for a moment, but you're not going to stay with me. You knew that they were going to be together. And they, it was never a romance or anything like that. It was just two people being together, which is kind of refreshing. There was never any kissing or anything like that. Um, it's just two people walking in the same direction in the desert. And I don't know, just everything was very predictable, very boring. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of torn. I did like the acting. Like I said, you know, if these people made me believe, this guy made me believe that he had been alone in the desert for decades and had no idea how to deal with people and just his daily routine was almost animalistic. It's just like get water, eat your food, take a nap, walk, get water, eat food, take a nap. And it just, you know, he was just basically living like on instinct. There's nothing there. He wasn't reading a book. Oh, I guess he was writing. He was writing like a comic book. And, um, you know, the girl found it, and, you know, she reads it, and um, she's like, well, how does it end? He said, well, I don't know yet. And, you know, he's writing his daily life into this comic book, but, I mean, still, he just seems like like a crab crawling across the sand, you know. He sleepy, walk, sleepy, walk. And, I don't know. It, they made me believe that, so the acting was good. Um, other than the footprints, all oh, the footprints bugged the shit out of me. But other than that, um, I think, you know, being a desert landscape, they really did. That's all you saw the whole movie was sand, except for the lake. When they, and the lake, like I said, it was an ocean. You know, big rolling waves, and it was, it was an ocean. But anyway, I don't know. Just this movie was a non-movie. I, I can't recommend it. Um... It's like if you had it on while you're doing the dishes and you're not paying attention to it and you're doing the dishes and you look up at the movie and you do the dishes and you look, you're just going to see the same thing every time. You're going to see the two people in sand talking. And that's all it is. And a lot of times they're not even talking. They're just walking in one direction. They're cooking their food. I mean, they don't talk. I mean, there's these long sequences where he cuts up his food and they show him cut him up and eat it. Um... They show him stick the water thing in the ground. He's got to crank this crank. It's just, you know, that's advanced. I, I call it, you know, magic. Mag, I had a word for it. I can't say it. Like magic-fied technology where it's like when you watch Thor. You know, Thor is so technology, technologically advanced, he appears as a god. But um, that's all it was. I, I really can't recommend this movie, even as background. Because like I said, you just... The talking is very quiet. You gotta have your TV up really loud. Um, but they don't really say anything of consequence. It's like, what's this robot? Here's a battery. Let's walk to the lake. Blah blah blah. And there's no convincing dialogue. There's no nothing. There's nothing visual about the movie. Is you know, there's no. This is okay. This is a second thing to bug me, and I, I'm gonna give this one a. Uh, I'm going to give this one a pass because it's supposed to be in the future. But, like, this girl, she's like this pale blonde girl wearing a short sleeve white shirt. And he's like this guy. He's wearing a short sleeve shirt. Half, you know, they're not, he's wearing a hat sometimes. Sometimes he didn't wear it. And she's not wearing a hat. And I'm thinking, I've, I've been in the desert. And if you walk a couple hours like that, you're just going to be burnt to a crisp. And... So after days and days of them walking, I'm thinking, God, why aren't they burnt to a crisp? And um, But I'm giving that one a pass because there might be something in the future, like some magic sunscreen or, or maybe the ozone came back so thick people don't get sunburned. Or, you know, So I kind of give that one a pass, but it kind of like bit at the back of my head. like, you Because know, she's like this real pale beauty. She's just you know white, blonde hair and just pale skin. And those are the kind of people you just picture, like, by the end of the day, they're just going to be beet red sunburnt, you know, crispy skin peeling off. But, no, that never happened. So that was that bugged me a little bit, but I give it a pass. I will not, I will never pass on the footprints going off into the, where they haven't gone before. That, that's just, that bugs the crap out of me. That should never happen. Um, yeah, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to recommend this movie. I I <laughs> I don't know. Should I recommend it? 
No, I don't. You know, if there were five stars, I would give it maybe two, maybe one and a half. If it was a ten-star rating system, it would be, again, two maybe. Um, but, yeah, somewhere in that lower scale. Don't watch it unless you have absolutely nothing else to watch. If you watch, I can't remember if they had previews for this or not, but, well, if you see a picture of these two people in the desert, you've seen the whole movie. So I don't think it's really worth the time. Um, but, you know, I, you know, I got torn because I hate to bash a movie, um, unless it's really bashable, but this, at least the acting was good and, you know, they were in the desert and, you know, they were, I was always watching, and this is like a thing I do because it's, it's, it happened in Lord of the Rings or way in the background and one of the scenes in Lord of the Rings, you could see a truck going by and, um, it's just something that got missed and, I'm, I kind of like do that. So they're in the desert. I was scanning the horizon and just about every scene. So they were pretty good about keeping cities and airplanes and cars and stuff out, but those, those footprints just ruined it. Other than that, it's just two people walking in the desert. I just, I can't recommend it. It's called Everything Far Away is Beautiful. Um, I think it was a good, it, it reminded me of like a student doing an art film and maybe he got a B plus on it but only because of some production values and some of the ideas, you know, some of his futuristic toys. And the robot head is completely baffling. Um, that was just a narrative device. And uh, they could have done something different with that, but I don't know. And then they never explained anything. And but again, that's personal. But I just felt this was a bland movie. This was like a movie that's just a white piece of bread with nothing on it, you know, if you're really, really, really hungry, you might eat that, but no, you're going to put something, you're going to put jelly on it, or ham, or something, <laughs> and this was just a white piece of bread with nothing on it, so, everything beautiful, far away, um, not going to recommend it, uh, one star out of five, maybe two stars out of ten, two fountains out of ten, because was, this movie just made me thirsty watching it. So, this, my name is Randy. Uh, they call me Star Thinker since 1979. I do have books on Amazon. Go check them out. Um, but I'm going to call it a night. So, take care. This has been a knee-jerk reaction video.